Welcome to the Mythbusters After Show. Jamie and I are taking your questions about our A-Team episode. Uh, first question, Jamie, how on earth, oh, it's, I guess, for me, or for the whole crew, how did we get Jamie to dress up as B.A. Baracus? We were actually nervous about it, but then he was totally game the moment we brought it up. I figure at this point, uh, why fight it? <laughs> I think Jamie cut a very excellent figure as BA, and I particularly like the Velcro glued to your head. Yeah, they were all, uh, they, they found all these, like, you know, what do you, what do you call it? Bald, mohawk wigs? Bald, bald cap yeah. things with mohawks on. I was like, give me some Velcro. Yeah, that was great. Awesome. Okay, next question. Adam was probably a teenager in the 80s, so as a fan, but Jamie must have been in his 40s, 50s, or even 70s at that point. Is it fair to say that you don't like the A-team, Jamie? Uh, it's a TV show, you know? It's like they blow crap up and they mess around. Uh, a lot of it didn't make any sense, but uh, I'm fine with the A-team. All right, there you go. Next question. Watching you guys build your own forklift fire was great. Felt like a new style for Mythbusters. Did you enjoy doing that? I will say I felt like it was old style Mythbusters. Uh, yeah, kind of. I mean, like it was going back to kind of our early, early days of like, just like winging it on a build. Yeah, it was a little out, out of control, kind of was slightly dangerous to be around at yeah. all, much less in front of it. And and we had a plan during that, um, which was to really not discuss what we were going to do. Uh, you know, after the, all these years, we can kind of smell a build that will probably work out, and that one smelled like that, so we tried not to discuss any facet of it until we were, you know, cameras were rolling and the materials were in front of us, and like, that was fun. Yeah, and also a uh, um, an astute observer will note that the uh, driving mechanism that we used on the uh, the double spinning wheel thing was also used in steam machine gun. Yes, yeah. yes. Those so. big impact wrenches, those are pretty handy things. Jamie invented the first steam-powered pitching machine for Abner Doubleday. All right, next question. Uh, how much of your A-team build was genuine and how much was planned earlier? I think we've already just answered that. Yeah, I mean, when do we not do something that's genuine on this show? In a well, but I mean, you know, we could have talked all the way through how that build was gonna go. And like I said, you know, we, we, we left all the details of that build to the actual, the actual day. Oh, okay. Uh, next question, were you surprised that you couldn't get their log cannon to work? No, it's, uh, you know, there's there, there's a square thing in a round hole. It fits inside there, but there there's go. air all around it. It's like, it just, uh, that was that was kind of ridiculous. It was, it was totally ridiculous. We had to go through the whole process, but, I, and actually, I must say, I, I knew that it wouldn't work. I'm surprised to the degree that it didn't work. I thought that, you know, a nice big clump inside that would move Two, the wood, but, I mean, one. it just totally didn't. Yeah, it didn't. It's funny looking at the TV show, you can almost see the, the, the grips in the background taking the two by fours and kind of going like that. Well, they're foam two by fours, I'm sure, yeah. <laughs> throwing them at the bad guys. Uh, all right, uh, next question. Where was Adam when Jamie's log exploded? I was hiding behind one of the doors in the shop. I was, I was like peeking around like this because I knew what he was doing and I didn't want to be near it. Uh, next question. The manhole test was cool, but I still don't quite understand why you started without a sewer. It's called a control. I think we explained it, right? So the A-team took the trouble to attach the dynamite under a manhole cover with a sewer underneath it. Well, if that was for any specific reason, the only way we're going to be able to determine that would be to compare it against dynamite just sitting on the street. Yeah, because the idea was to throw the car, not to actually like damage the car or, or, kill, or, or, or kill, kill the guy somebody inside, inside. Really. it's not the car we're worried about it's the juicy center yeah so the uh the explosion had nowhere to go other than up into the car and a little out to the sides when it was without the manhole underneath it but with the manhole it was enough to dissipate it just enough which actually surprised us yeah uh to the point where it, it was uh, quite it, effective yeah it was effective yeah didn't expect to come up with a genuine result on that one. Uh, next question, how do those plunger things actually work? Well, see, when one of your toilet gets, oh, they mean the explosive plungers. Yeah, they, I think that was a Hercules. What, I think and, from the 20s, yeah. And basically it has a, a rack, as in rack and pinion, in other words, the shaft has gear teeth on it, 
and it has a gear that interacts with that. As you push it down, it turns a gear, which turns a generator, which creates the current. Yeah, so it's effectively a generator. Like those little flashlights that woo, 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 to uh, wind up and get a beam, it's the same thing. It just generates enough electricity to send a spark through the wire, igniting the blasting cap, igniting the dynamite. Uh, next question, Does it, did it make a difference that your cars weren't the same? Um, they were effectively the same. I know they looked different and they had slightly different model numbers, but they had actually the same unibody, they had the same engine, and they had effectively the same construction, except for a few detail pieces. They were, they were pretty much the same car. Yeah, it would have been better if they were identical, but we figure it was close enough. Close enough. Um, last question, A-Team or MacGyver? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to go with MacGyver on this one. They, they, there's at, at least there are m uh, there are far more testable things in MacGyver's universe than there are in the A Team universe. I mean, you know, both were outlandish, campy '80s television shows, but MacGyver was often doing stuff that was at least somewhere close to reality. Where a lot of the A Team stuff was just like, "Are you kidding?" If you have an hour before the bad guys come back, you're gonna build a propane cannon with a square peg and a round hole and that you can't reload, but somehow it reloads itself magically instead of just running away? Yeah. I mean, come on. I'd, I, I guess I would go along with that. Although, you know, I, I'd have to say that both of them are full of crap as yeah, far as the, yeah. uh, you know, no, the, no, but... the actual science, the quality of the science is like, you know, it's just uh, bad or worse. It, well, yeah, but <laughs> MacGyver's far better. I mean, we're talking, yeah, these are shades of gray, but MacGyver, it's MacGyver. We say MacGyver. And I think that's it for the Mythbusters After Show. Thank you for joining us. See you guys next week. Whoosh.